Good morning, Benjamin Hadfield. Teach me to dive. Doing a head-to-head-to-head-to-head -to -head -to -head -to -head comparison of the four biggest dive computers on the market today. We're starting off with on the left the Apex DSX. I've got the setup in side mount mode, so don't get mad. But it's in gradient factor 5085. Coming up next on the second position, we have the Garmin Mark II-I, set in single tank, but tech mode, gradient factor 5085. Next, we've got the old standard reliable Shearwater Perdix number one in tech mode, gradient factor 5085. Fantastic computer. And then finally, the newcomer, the Sunto Steel Black, set in Bullman mode and tech mode at gradient factor 5590. These are all four fine computers, and they are the biggest ones on the market. Now, if you like this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Teach Me To Dive. Now, again, thank you so much for subscribing for all you that are watching today. Now, as we start to look through this, we get the questions of what are you diving? Well, I'm diving two tanks on my back. That's twin sets with an isolator. They're both HP 100s. Obviously, they're high pressures, as you can see the depth and the pressure on all four of these computers. I want you to be able to see the pressure on this and how easy it is to see and, and clear it is. Now, just kind of a note on the shear water, you can make it on just one tank or one pod and it, you can make that pressure read a lot larger. Currently, the shear water is set to side mount mode as is the apex as well. So you can see it flashing over there on the right hand side. And because of that, uh, both of those computers are not able to read my gas time remaining. Now, the other two computers, the Garmin Mark II, which I've had for about three years now, as well as the Sunto Black uh, is set to single tank mode. So those are both able to read the gas time remaining as well as the gas consumption and do some basic calculations like that as well. The thing to look at these is that they're very easy to read. They're very easy to, to get the information that you're looking for. And it's interesting to kind of watch these go through the process. As you saw, the Mark II kicked into its first warning. Now the Sunto is saying five minutes uh, left till NDL and they're all pretty close in. The one thing to be aware of on that Sunto though, is I do have to send the gradient factor a little bit more aggressively. It's running a 5590 instead of a 5085 like the other three. So Sunto is definitely, of the three computers, definitely the most conservative. Now we just hit that NDL alert on the Apex as well as on the Shearwater, and you saw it shaking. They have to push the button on the Shearwater to clear that, that warning to let people know, or let yourself know what's going on. There we go, just got our second warning on the Mark II. It does vibrate, it's kind of nice as well. It gives you that if uh, notification uh, through the vibration alerts. So does the other three though. The Shearwater Perdix 1 does not, but the Shearwater Perdix 2, they corrected that, and they actually have a nice vibration alert on that for you as well. But as we kind of go through this, we finally, as you can see, we've hit 100 something feet down and now we're kind of starting to slow down. Be aware this is 300% sped up. So no, I am not swimming that fast. In fact, in the short amount of time, we're about three minutes into this video, you can see very clearly that dive time is nine minutes. So we're definitely kicking along pretty fast, but we can see that they're all staying pretty close. The other question I get is, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, Benjamin. Look at the depth. The depth is not measuring the same. We've got 103, 102, 103, and 100. Well, here's the thing. These are consumer grade pressure sensors. So they can be within three or four, 5% off and they're gonna be just fine. Where it really gets into the heart of this as since they are so close though, so is just be aware as each computer manufacturer sets and utilizes that Bullman graded factor and that Bullman algorithm just a little different. They add their own little kind of whips and wangs and all the things to them just a little bit differently. And as you can see, now we're down to zero deco time on the Sunto. We still have a minute left on the Shearwater, a minute left on the Mark II, and a minute left on the Apex as well. So they're all within pretty close of there. There we go. Finally, the Sunto kicks in and it does a progressive decompression model. So it's, while it's set that the safety stop is supposed to be at 20 feet, it grabs and says, okay, your first deco ceiling is 10 feet for four minutes. Now we just had our second one kick in and what's really neat about the uh, Mark II Garmin 
is that it gives you a progressive in seconds amount of time for deco as well. So you've got 20 feet and now 19 seconds, 20 seconds, and so on and so on and so on. So it's very accurate and it's very continuous. Now, as we kind of go now, I noticed that there was a little bit deeper hole that I could dig myself into. And now we have the apex just kicked in and now it's 20 feet for one minute as well. So we were able to kind of start getting an idea of what's going on. Asunto over there at five minutes at 10 feet, kicked up to uh, 20 feet for two minutes. Now the deco times, here's the everything and when they went into deco and how long. And you see the Shearwater was the most aggressive on the same Bullman algorithm. Now we've got a lot of uh, thoughts to do. Now just so if you're wondering why the lights keep going out every once in a while, my buddy had a light that was dying and it was about one candle light. So every once in a while when I turn around to look for him, I couldn't see him. So I'd have to turn my light off and then I'd be like, oh, there you are. Okay, so there we go. Now, as we start getting ready to kick out of this hole, I went ahead and went to navigation. I was really unimpressed with the Apex's com calculation and compass navigation. It kind of bounced around. And you see, I'm not turning a lot, but it's kind of bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around. So I, I'm definitely going to take some time and do some calibration on it. So I used, went back over to my trusty Garmin, did a little double tap, and its uh, compass was very accurate, very easy to use, very easy to see as well. Now, if you do use the compass on the Shearwater, it's just as amazing as well. And I actually like the Sunto as well. If one push it over, it gives you a, a visual navigation compass on the right-hand side over top, but you still get your PSI. Now, one of the cool things I did like about doing the Garmin is that when I do code a compass, I'm still able to see my decompression information as well. Same thing with the Shearwater. Um, you push that bottom right button and the compass comes up and it clears out that 21% uh, in, and the NDL and the total time to surface, but you keep all your decompression information as well. Now, one of the things that I really, really like about the Shearwater um, is that on that left-hand side in the mini, you see GF99 and GF surface. Now, what that means to you is that's exactly where I'm at in my grading factor or my M value. Also, as you look at that GF surface, that would be the amount of gradient factor or M value percentage if I were to surface right then and there. So pretty, pretty cool if you think about it. Um, on the right hand side of the apex, you've got your gradient factor as well. And you can see I'm still staying well in the green, but that's gradient factor of where I'm at. And as you can see from the shear water on my GF99, I'm like at 1% M value total. So I'm not very far into it, not really thinking too uh, worry too much about it, but you can see on my GF surface as we're starting to head up the up the point. Now I'm at 110%. So if I surfaced right this minute, I'd be at 110% gradient value. Now we just noticed if you look at the apex, it went and kicked over. Now it's at 30 feet for one minute. Um, one of the problems we did have on this is I'd forgotten that I kept uh, had my deco bass gas still uh, calculated in there and still in the apex. And I went to go click that out real quick, but this was a, a heavy rig to kind of kick and I couldn't kick it off. I couldn't get it to stop. And finally, when I did kick it off to stop, I accidentally kicked it over to my upper gas. So make sure, and when you are using multiple gases, that you only have the gases on that you are actually going to use. Um, that is definitely a key point of doing going through this process. And you can see I was kind of screwing around with it a little bit on the left-hand side there, trying to kick it over and say, hey, I didn't kick it out of that 45% uh, percent auction that that uh, light deco mix that I had going on there. So I had to be aware of that as well. Now, as we're kind of coming up the surface, we're getting it finally at that, uh, we cleared up to 20 feet at two minutes on the apex. We still have 20 feet, 20 feet at uh, two and a half minutes on the Mark II, 20 minutes, uh, 20 feet, three minutes at the, uh, the uh, sheer water, uh, five minutes at 10 feet on that progressive deco blend on as we just start our ascent here as well. All, all four of these computers, solid computers, did a great job. Definitely a good way to monitor and map your nitrox or your nitrogen in your bloodstream and make sure that you're diving safely as well. Now do keep in mind that we did switch the gas blend over on the Apex over to a different gas blend. And so it was thinking that I was running a 45% nitrox blend for a decompression procedure. So that's why it did de definitely came out of deco faster than all of the rest of them, but it would have been that much more. We can still see the Garmin, the Shearwater, and the Sunto all still in that decompression level as well. So the 
Looks like the uh, Garmin's getting ready to come out. It just came out, and we still have one minute left on the sheer water. One minute, you can see I came up above the uh, the ceiling there for just a second, and it didn't like that, so it gave me a little yellow flash. I was only a foot above, but I did that just so you can see what it looks like. We're kicking along just below our ceiling, just having some fun time. This is a shore dive, so we're enjoying looking at some of the crawfish and uh, things that are around. Uh, checking my buddy, I went ahead and stirred up a little bit of sand right there, just so you can see that there is my buddy right behind me. Now, one of the things I really, really liked about uh, the Shearwater as well as the Sunto is they also give you a secondary clear time or safety stop time. I'm a big believer that after a deco stop, that while yes, a safety stop is suggested and doesn't not required, it is definitely a good idea to spend just a little extra time, make sure we blow off that nitrogen just a little bit more. As we can see on the apex, we can see our gradient factor is real nice and low in the green and we're nice and safe to come up. We can also look at the uh, GF99 and we can see that we're kicking right along real nicely. Um, on that and that we've got plenty of safety on our GF surface at 79% so we can just do a direct ascent. But you know, it just doesn't hurt. Take that little extra time, do a three or four minute safety stop and go through that as well. As we can see on there's the, on the apex, we can also see where our gradient factor is and what tissue compartments are on a little bit concerning. But overall, we can see that our gradient factor is nice, um, that we're ready to do that good surface as well. And each one's clicking off their dive time continuously. We're now finally at that 10 foot mark and we decided we're gonna go ahead and head up and call this dive. We used a little over 3000 PSI for that 31 minute dive to hundred and something feet. There's my dive buddy. Hi Aaron, dun ding ding ding. And we, we had a really good time. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you like these kind of videos, make sure to take that time and subscribe to Teach Me To Dive on YouTube on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter, and any other place you think you can find us as well. We appreciate you. Again, Benjamin Hatfield, Teach Me to Dive. You have a wonderful day.